Uh, welcome to Content Club Live at the new time of one o'clock. Uh, we've shifted it from four o'clock. If you've watched previously, um, back to, well, not back to one o'clock, but to one o'clock. Um, because I figured that probably lunchtime's a nice time where people have maybe got a bit more time to kick back and to kind of sit and listen for a half an hour or so. Um, and Friday, obviously, is a good day because everyone's taking their foot off the gas a little bit as well. So it's a good time to sit, to think, to listen. Um, and if you've watched Content Club in the last uh, few weeks, you'll know that what we talk about on this show is a whole bunch of good stuff around content, around planning content, creating content and publishing content. And um, uh, obviously, uh, I run two video companies now. Where we create a lot of video content for people. But broadly, I like talking about content in terms of you know, social media content. It could be as broad as blogs, speaking publicly, which we're going to maybe touch on today, uh, and all sorts of different ways of um, reaching an audience uh, through the messages that you create. So uh, I've uh, upped the game a little bit this week with the uh, the platform. Um, you can possibly see a little bit of branding and stuff now going on, which is uh, good. Makes me feel a little bit more professional. Um, we also have uh, a couple of uh, ways you can access the other shows or access this show if you can't watch the Content Club um, live, then obviously uh, we like to be able to access the show uh, at a later stage. The best way to stay in touch and to get notifications about the shows and also to be able to get the links and things to our website when, uh, when we publish them afterwards is to subscribe on our website. So you need to go to remotevideoteam.com forward slash subscribe and we'll keep you updated about future shows. Uh, we're going out live on Facebook today as well on our Remote Video Team Facebook page and obviously LinkedIn as well. And the other way you can follow the uh, what's happening is um, by using the Content Club Live hashtag. So I've tagged all of the previous episodes with that. So if you search for that on LinkedIn, you should be able to find previous episodes. Today, we are gonna be talking to Tricia Lewis who uh, is an expert in speaking and public speaking and kind of accessing the real you and uh, your message and enabling you to, <clears throat> to do that. And obviously that rings true with what I do and what we talk about and what we do because um, it's all about uh, getting up in front of people and kind of communicating well. So I'm going to press my button and bring Trisha in and say hello to her. Hello, Trisha, how are you doing? <laughs> Fine, thank you. Um, yeah, I was just massively adjusting my background. And I thought, oh gosh, I do need people to see the amazing books I have on my shelf. So that's important. Yes, absolutely. Yes, <laughs> we, we want we want, uh, we want people to um, to know what's going on and uh, and to, yeah, to have a, a yeah a nice feeling for who we're talking to. Um, okay, brilliant. So. Um, what I'm going to do then is I'm just going to allow you to introduce yourself. I've given you a little brief kind of introduction, but give us a, a little flavour of what you do. And I've got a few questions and we'll kind of dig into those in a little bit. But if you can give us a brief overview of what you do and why you do it, that would be really useful. And then we can go from there. So over to you. Brilliant, David. Fabulous to be here. I've never done one of these little kind of things before so it's like exciting um and i look i'm actually reading what it says on my linkedin headline and i'll tell you why in a minute helping business leaders become brilliant speakers by owning their voice and message i'm a coach i'm a speaker and the reason i've read it is because it's one of my most excruciating challenges is to filter down everything i do into something simple so in a nutshell, background varying from being a professional actor, a speaker, doing all sorts of other things which involve very instant trust building communication skills. My degree is in communication, so I've got the kind of academic underpinning. Um, bringing all that together about three and a half years ago to set up a coaching business um, has been um, a fascinating journey but what I discovered as I went along was that the crucial core connecting theme to everything that I was hearing from clients the journey I was going on myself in order to have impact was that you needed to bring your real self into the picture big time but then I realized there was no point in just saying be real I needed to actually be forensic about that and offer 
proper tactics. So that's what I do. So whether it's to help people be brilliant public speakers or, to be honest, get up and do a networking pitch anywhere across that spectrum, it's about that connecting interaction. Brilliant. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, like, that's that's something that, you know, like I say, I've kind of talked about in the past. So it's really nice to find somebody who specializes in that specifically so we can dig into it a little bit deeper. Um, it's becoming a more and more prominent part of running any kind of business, isn't it? Because we, you know, we've, since we've had sort of the birth of social media, since we've had um, the birth of YouTube and kind of mobile phones where we can film and webcams, all these different kind of like tools that we've got now, it's become a kind of um, almost almost essential part, so specific, certainly if you're in certain areas, if you're in kind of service-based things or if you're in a very people-led kind of environment with your business, that it's become quite essential to be able to um, broadcast, to be able to communicate in that kind of public sphere and add to that conversation. So at a very basic level, it's it's social media and it's just kind of, con you know, contributing to a, a conversation maybe on social media. But then when you take that step on beyond that, you get into, you know, broadcasting essentially. So, you know, whereas before you might get up and do a presentation, now you can essentially do the same thing, but using a little bit of video or something like that to reach a bigger audience. So, I mean, I suppose, you know, you, you if you look at your bio, it talks about, um, presenting, um, and what are the what are the similarities or the differences even maybe between that and and using video to to? Well, no, that that's present. good. And by the way, I'm also the host of a podcast called the Make It Real Podcast. So that's another form of broadcasting in yeah, which course, yeah. you have to be real and connect on a real level. So to to me, the, the whether it is doing a network pitch in sixty seconds, doing a keynote talk in front of a huge audience or a TED talk or whatever it is, or doing a video that you're posting on LinkedIn, that there is there is the basic aim in all of those things, which is that you want to connect. You want, it's all about connecting because otherwise it is a waste of time and space. And so the there isn't a huge difference. I mean, obviously, there are there are ways that you tweak according to the delivery vehicle, but the underlying energy that is going into all of these things is the one that leads to connection. And so I've kind of um, dissected that, having having got the experience of the big stage stuff, the networking stuff, the little events stuff, the small talks and community groups, and then the video connecting via all the videos that I churn out there. Um, I've sort of done the forensics on it to, to figure out what that what those common themes are between all of them that you can use to create the connection. Okay, great. Well, so I mean, we'll, I think we'll 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 dig into those, um, and it would be nice to you know kind of investigate what some of those those things are. I suppose, um, you know, if 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 I were to kind of so so I've done a lot of this kind of thing myself, you know, kind of get up in front of you know on stage and camera and that kind of thing. So I, I've kind of had some insight into the challenges of it, I suppose. And one of the things that I've come across, or one of the things that I think about quite a lot, is the fact that there are lots of different yous, aren't there? There are, There's a you where you're kind of, you know, having a few drinks with your friends on a Saturday night and you're kind of very relaxed and you're probably swearing a bit more and you're probably, you know, sort of like being a little bit more um, loose with your tongue and all those different kind of things. And then there's maybe a you where you're at a business lunch where you're kind of a bit more relaxed, but maybe kind of, you know, got your guard up a little bit. And then there's another you where you're on stage or there's another you where you're writing copy for your website. There's lots of different yous, aren't there? And personally, I hate the you when I'm writing copy for my website because I go into this kind of like, my business is blah, 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 like horrible formal corporate kind of tones that just, kind of don't mean anything and have no kind of character. And I suppose the challenge is how do you kind of take bits of your maybe more relaxed you and bring them into that kind of formal environment so that actually, without being too loose-tongued, you're kind of bringing a bit more of your character and your kind of warmth and humanity into that environment. So that's a challenge, isn't it? How do, how, how, how do you approach something like that? <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I'm very excited about this because I, right, I'm going to take you, first of all, I'm going to drop a name into all of this that you might be familiar with called um, Goffman, Ernest Goffman, no. Irving Goffman. Is he Ernest or Irving? Oh, for goodness sakes, Tricia. Don't drop names and then get them wrong. Here we are, Irving. Okay. This guy here, um, the presentation of self in everyday life. And that's very much what you were just talking about. And also you could go into personas and all of the rest of it. So, um, yes, you've got backstage you, you've got front stage you. And I think people often make get a little bit of a connection confusion here because about the the term real you because they have a sense they've got to be one concrete real them <laughs> and as you right. so rightly said that's that's rubbish so, but but there is a sort of essence and a kind of coherent place here which which is you and you and you do need to constantly be connecting to that but what i call this is <laughs> conscious tweaking I just love okay. the word tweaking, David. I just like yeah. it. Um, yeah. So this is conscious tweaking. So it's conscious tweaking, and you need to find contextual balance. So in other words, yes, all that being real stuff sounds, you know, hey, man, let's all be real. But actually, you need to unpeel this, do the forensics, because, yeah, you need to be in control of some very – very sensible tweaking versions of you so as you say you know you, you can have more or less formal zoomy conversations with people that might be prospective clients who you don't know particularly um you know or with people that you know very well that you're brainstorming with i mean for goodness sakes there are going to be tweaks you know you might be um doing a video that you no, you particularly want to target towards, say, corporates or, you know, um, people in charge of training, whatever it is. And you might just put a jacket on and you might just have slightly less of the little asides or whatever it is. And so, you know, whereas your daily posting on LinkedIn or whatever, when you, you know, it's for your connections and stuff and you, you can go out there and be a bit vulnerable and silly or whatever. Um, you know, I, I wouldn't probably put my investigator Lewis, uh, which is a sort of alter ego that I have character videos out there. If I was um, making a sort of proposal to a, 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 a training situation, a corporate or whatever. So of course we tweak, but we do it consciously. And this is where the big difference is, because you need to be in control of this part, because the alternative is that you are being driven by what's going on outside. In other words, you're being driven by, I should be this, I should be that, I should sound like that. People will expect me to sound like that. Oh, they won't like it if I sound like that. Or this is what everybody else sounds like. Hence what you're talking about with your website. You know, we look at all these websites and say, oh, God, that's the way to do it. I'll do it like this. And then you you just lose yourself then. And then you've lost the real connection. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> so, so, I mean, I, I suppose... Yeah, I mean, that makes total sense that you kind of, you have to think about the audience to a certain extent and you have to think about who you're directing, um, you know, your message to. Um, but I suppose there's maybe little things around uh, you know, humour, for example. So, you know, I'm quite capable of kind of being a little bit more humorous or a bit more kind of, um, you know, in, in the company of friends or something like that. You know, you kind of joke about things or you take the piss out of each other, whatever it is. Um, and then, but you worry, don't you, about kind of bringing that into a, you know, a formal environment. But actually, if you can do that, what you're really doing is, is kind of, um, sharing your character a little bit and you're making, you're making a stronger connection between yourself and the audience. And, that is kind of one of the things that's going to separate you from other people, is it not? You know, because actually, you know, if you if you watch five people do a presentation, and and one of them is is you know, you know, you connect with one of them on a personal level more, you're probably going to remember that one a bit more as well. Are you? Is that is that? Yeah, I, I think I think again, it all comes down to what what is you. So so when I to give you an example, when I put that the first of my investigator Lewis videos out on LinkedIn, 
which some people are still saying, oh, serious, don't make it like Facebook and all these other kinds of guys. Yeah. I, I was actually encouraged to do that by the wonderful John Esperian, uh, who pr pretty much gets a shout out in everything <laughs> because he's just so wonderful and supportive and generous. Um, yeah. And he had met me in real life. OK, so he'd met me. He understood that I had this sense of humour of a particular type and that I had a performance background. Um, when I nervously kind of thought that I'd like to bring a bit more of that into LinkedIn because it's me, um, I, I, he was really supportive. So out it went, Investigator Lewis, I'm in a, I'm in a trench coat, a, a, a Stetson hat or whatever and dark shades and, you know, appearing sort of behind dustbins and what have you. But I do make a very serious point about communication. So I'm, I am still sticking to the message and the use and the value. But with this entertaining vehicle of Investigator Lewis. So I can assure you that I was a little bit nervous about putting it out, but I thought to heck with it, because if I don't start doing stuff like this, I will get so demotivated with my business because I will be constantly suffocating a really, really important part of who I am. And so out it went and, of course, got more engagement and views and comments than I had ever had in two and a half, nearly three years. And every time I put it out, it gets fabulous comments. And those comments come from perfectly sensible, serious, wonderful, um, high up CEOs, you mention it, people. I haven't just got comments from, you know, my friend Sue, who says, oh, you're so funny, Trisha. Um, they, loads of people that I don't know are connecting and saying this is such a useful point and I love the way you put it across. OK, yeah, great. And I suppose it's really important to remember that CEOs and you know top executives and all those kind of people, they're people as well. <laughs> like they have children, they have you know like they 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 do things at the weekends that aren't work, you know, and it's and uh, and actually you know sort of trying to break down that wall, that kind of corporate wall is 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 important, I think. And it's one of the great things about social media is it's allowed us to do that. It's it's actually kind of done that for us almost, you know, that we've now kind of looking more at the personal. Um, that's, I mean, that's where personal branding has come from, isn't it? That you're now connecting more with a person than a big kind of brand face, I suppose. Um, so I'm gonna, if my, you know, if I, if I think about uh, my kind of journey with this and my, my kind of like personal characteristics. So, for example, I, I know that, you know, I, I actually quite like being on stage or in front of a camera uh, and I kind of like get excited about the idea of it and I kind of quite enjoy doing it. Um, but then I'm less, you know, I'm actually a little bit of an introvert and I'm actually less uh, fond of, you know, social events and things like that, um, where I possibly don't know what's going to happen. So, I mean, maybe that's just a control thing for me or something. I don't know. But, but that's my characteristic. You know, I, I, I lean into those sort of things and I lean back from those other things. I know from talking to a lot of clients and other people that we've worked with and, and people on LinkedIn and stuff like that, that they're maybe the other way around. So they don't want to be in front of the camera, but maybe they're a lot more kind of social and they prefer kind of social environment. I know that my wife can talk to someone who comes to the door for 20 minutes, whereas for me, it's a very functional kind of interaction, you know. Um, so, you know, are those are kind of innate characteristics. Can we, can we overcome those? Can we kind of change and adapt those so that, people who aren't comfortable being in front of a camera or on stage can become more comfortable? And how do you do that? Yeah, I, yes, is, is the sort of simple answer, um, whilst not, importantly, not trying to become like someone else. So um, I think I also have a big dollop of introverts in me, which when I first did a Myers-Briggs, somebody said to me, I don't believe it, you must have done it wrong. I said, Actually, I know myself and it's true. Um, so, you know, because people think actors can't be introverts. I think actually most of us are. So, but it's this mix. So that's fine. And I understand that everybody is different. So the, can you, can you change? Right. Well, I think you have to start again. It's doing the forensics and I'm sort of layering everything. And what to me comes at the core of it is this being present thing because and this is something as as an actor you god you build such a lot of muscles with this but when i went out on the speaker circuit i was discovering and this is how this is 
where it clicked. Uh, for years, I was doing my thing. I was doing the performance bit, the entertaining bit, the speaker bit. Great, everything was fine. And then in the social bit that came before and after, um, albeit it was lovely, there were lovely people, all the rest of it, but they were all strangers, you know. I was thinking, please get me out of here as soon as possible. So that, that kind of weird introverty thing kicked in. And I, I didn't enjoy, for instance, if I was an after dinner speaker, the bit where I had to sit around having the meal with some was agony just kept me up there doing my thing. So then I thought, what is going on? Because I want to be able to enjoy the whole event. And I made this super human effort to be more present, be less stuck in my own self-conscious thing in my head. And I did that by asking questions and then having this delightful realization that when you ask a question, people love talking about themselves, just like I am now. Um, and of course, that means that you don't have to make huge amounts of effort then with thinking of all sorts of clever things to say you can just pick things up as they come along be the detective listen for the clues and it's quite fun but in order to do that you've got to be present and not worrying about what you sound like what you look like what you're going to say next what people would think of you etc and for me that was actually quite that was quite a challenge um and so i think that when if you're on video or out there doing a talk or or, or talking to your friend i think the same thing applies the more present you can be the more you kind of forget really what the sort of medium is and exactly what's going on and da, 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 because you're you're in there having a conversation just like you would um you know in so many other contexts that you would feel relaxed in does, does that make sense yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think, well, I mean, that, that that's uh, an idea that folds in from all different other areas of life as well, isn't it, about being present. And I heard someone explain it in a really nice way the other day that, you know, uh, what is it? I think if you're, if you're looking in the future, you're anxious. If you're spending time in the past, you're depressed or something. And it is like they, those kind of, they're different kind of emotions for not being right here, right now sort of thing. And um so yeah, that's an interesting, that's a good tip, I think, um, for, yeah, overcoming that certainly in that place. Um, I've got a couple of, I've got, well, certainly, um, I'm gonna try my new software here. I've got a comment come in from Gordon. Uh, it says, asking questions on a one-to-one -one, uh, or when presenting from stage work really well, getting engagement and interest. Uh, so thank you for that. If you've got any other comments, I can uh, press my magic button and bring them up on stage or questions at this stage. I'll, I'll flag that up now so that we can get in with anyone who's got a question uh, by the end of this. So, um, so, and I suppose uh, the other thing that is, I think, important, and I've heard a lot of other people talk about it as well, and I'd be interested in your take on it, is whether, whether when you're presenting something, whether you should be, um, obviously you're speaking to many, but whether you should be resonating with a few. Now, it's impossible to kind of please everyone, and it's impossible to kind of, you know, uh, you know, obviously you want your message to be kind of broad and you want lots of people to kind of get that message. But the truth of the fact is, is that you can't kind of resonate with everyone all the time. And actually, nor should you, because um, if you, you know, if you're trying to please everyone, you're probably pleasing no one. So there's a little bit about kind of being a bit more yourself, you know, maybe you, like I said earlier, like maybe you swear a little bit more, or maybe you're kind of, um, maybe you've got some anecdotes that some people will get that other people might not get, whatever it is. Or maybe, you know, if you talk about who you are personally, so, you know, if you say that you really like golf or you really like surfing or something like that, when you start to bring in those kind of human elements into what you're talking about, mm. um, then you'll find that people will connect with those. Not everyone, but it doesn't matter. You know, like I can watch somebody on a video who likes golf and I'm not going to judge them because I don't like golf. I'm not going to say, well, that's it. I'm not watching anymore because he likes golf and I don't. But there will be a small cross-section of people in there who go, I like what you like. And that can sponsor conversations really just on a social level. And we forget sometimes that social media should be social, I think. Um, yeah. And that helps sometimes build that relationship in a, in a slightly quicker or, or sort of more effective way as well, do you think? And and I have a, yeah, I have, you're, you're right, because if you're being you, then the great benefit of that is, of course, that you are, you are going to start building 
fabulous connections on things like LinkedIn and social media because because people are resonating with that. And okay, you'll get some sort of people who are kind of wishy washy about it, you know, not bothered that much, but they don't hate it. You, whatever. Um, but you will only by being more you uh, really get those really strong connections. And I've discovered that so, so much on LinkedIn. But I mean, the, 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 the thing that I, I have another word actually coming up here um, called vulnerability weaving. And I talk about this with clients who are really worried about how much of this personal story to put out there, because I think some it, it, I also talk about binary thinking you know where, where people and it's what we do as humans so we tend to do this kind of well if i've either got to be this or that you know and actually this is a classic example of no you don't have to spew your entire cupboard full of skeletons out all over mm. linkedin or wherever um but neither do you have to think <laughs> it's all mine. I'm not going to tell anybody or be worried that just by giving that little bit more, um, suddenly you're going to lose everybody because you just said it. You might lose a couple of people, um, but you'll gain far, far more when they find that resonance and connection. So, I mean, I literally put a post out, I think it was yesterday, um, where I, I was sat behind my memory box, which is real. I haven't made it up. Oh, <laughs> um, it's a box, yeah, mm. full of stuff. Mm. And, and I was just making the point about how difficult it is to get that coherent headline about what you do when you've got so much frigging life and experience and, yes, qualifications, but also stories and everything. And and part of you says, oh, you know, I've, come on, I've got all this. How can I put that in? 70 characters or whatever it is and and anyway i'm i made that was making this point and saying you know i always talk about well you've, you've got to weave bits in in a way that is relevant and resonates you know you don't just chuck everything in you think of little metaphors that connect to a story in your life to the point you're trying to make in a business context um or of course you connect when you comment on people's posts because they've said something and then you can come in and again you don't have to come in with a oh my god that's exactly like the story about me and then, and then you spew everything out I mean, you can just say i really you know i really get this I, I i've got a bit of a story about my first marriage or something like that and that's all you mm. need to say you don't yeah. need any more than that to, to make that connection. So it, it is, it's weaving it rather than thinking you do all or nothing. And, and yeah, and I always get a lot of really comments that basically say to me, this resonates, this connects when I put stuff out like that. Mm. But, you know, I could, you know, I'm, I'm 63 in all this. I've got a heck of a lot of life, life behind me. I could, I could shock. I could, I, I could do all sorts of stuff if I spewed everything out. But I just pick yeah. little bits and pieces. I think. I mean, I know. I, 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 uh, I know a few people in the kind of uh, sort of that we've worked with a few people that head up the kind of personal branding space a little bit. And what they tend to do, and it's quite interesting, is they have almost a theme in their kind of personal stories. So you know, there's they may be. Um, you know, they maybe like peanut butter, right? Okay, so uh, or, or marmite, you know, and um, so and and that, that's like a contentious thing that you can have a chat around, blah 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 blah. And but you know, they, they didn't talk about everything that they like, you know, every food that they like or don't like. They have that, and then on the other side, they maybe like um, Marvel films or superhero films or something like that. So and they have that over there, and there's maybe three or four things that kind of recur and and come up as themes that that they can that can help kind of you know communicate their character in a bit more depth but are also kind of controlled they're not they're not kind of all over the place like you were saying you're not kind of dealing di you know dishing into every sort of little thing but also i think you know you have to remember certainly in an online environment that your message has only been seen in part here and here and here spread over a kind of big canvas so you know in terms of reinforcing those ideas um you have to repeat yourself quite a lot and actually uh, you see that in business quite a lot. You actually see it in other areas like like music, you know, 
you know, if, if, if you two go on tour, they play the same songs that they were playing 30 years ago because that's what people expect. And you see a lot of, uh, one of the, one of the, and I've sp spoken about this part in the past on the content club that one of the um, things that you sometimes feel like you're doing too much in business is repeating yourself. You know, saying the same kind of ideas over and over again, but actually they need to be said over and over again, because if you're specializing in one area, you need to keep reinforcing that idea. And that's what people will eventually come back to you for. Um, so I think, you know, it's, it's, it's good, like absolutely, you can bring these human elements in um, and uh, but maybe you kind of keep them in check a little bit. Um, I, I suggest people sort of collate what I call a story bank, basically. And, right. uh, you know, they have, yeah. have a nice little bank of go go all the way back. Go on. It's fun. Go all the way. Well, it's not all fun. Go all the way back, back to as far back as you can remember. And it can be the silliest little story. I used to tell a story about how I couldn't go over the, the metal footpath bars, you know, that you did the somersaults over when you were a kid. And I could never do it, and and the other kids were all cool, and they did it, and I stood there feeling like an idiot. And mm. when I was about to be sick, well, actually on my 60th birthday, I went back and found the exact same bars from the town I grew up in. They were still there, a bit overgrown, the footpath. And I got my husband to take a photo, and I went, and I managed to go do the somersault run thing. So that, <laughs> I, I connected that to a story yeah. about assumptions, about the labels we stick on ourselves and how I would made the assumption I would never be, I'd always be the sort of clumsy kid that couldn't do that thing, the slightly yeah. chubby kid, the not very sporty kid, um, I, whatever it was. And I was still carrying part of that baggage around. And so it, it was like me going back and just questioning that assumption taking control of it so i made that was the point i was making in a business context and i yeah. illustrated with that story so if you've got little stories however silly they might seem um it's often the smaller smaller simpler stories that work best make a little make a little bank of them a little fine yes yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I have one of those in Evernote myself, actually. Um, but I, I kind of always forget to go and look in it. That's the thing. <laughs> it's like I've written down some good ones. But um, OK, we've got a question from uh, Gordon, who um, I suppose is possibly more one for me, but I'm going to I'm going to let you let you have a stab at it as well. It's um, it's more difficult doing recorded video with no audience to come across like you're having a conversation and being authentic and relaxed. So obviously, yeah, I mean, that's uh, that's the, um, you know, like e even in a presentation when you're speaking live, you can see people's faces and you can get a bit of feedback. And if someone laughs at something that you said, then you can kind of, you know, you can improvise a little bit around it and you get some response. But uh, it's quite difficult in front of a lens. Um, what, what would you recommend for that before I kind of... This partly goes back to a, another bit of the sort of equation um, um, or, or, or sort of the steps of connecting, because again, we, we've got to connect, we've got to connect, okay, through that screen, wherever it is, we've got to connect. And this is about um, also thinking about what your content is, because, again, this gets you out of your head um, and into that present space, which you need to be when you switch, you know, when you press record on your thing. The great thing is, of course, you can delete and you can record and you can delete. So that's that's a gift um, because you must look back, observe ob objectively and think, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you are enthusiastic about your content, if you are resonating with them, in other words, you've thought of this from their perspective, and if perhaps you've got this kind of story and experience to put in there as well, which is very much you as well, but it's connecting to them, then you're a long way there with forgetting about worrying about the fact there's no one there because everything you're now doing is, is coherent, it's linked up, it's connecting. And it's almost as if you're imagining people asking questions and you're answering them. Uh, that's a very good way to go about your your message. It's like you're saying, they've asked me this. Oh, that's interesting. Here's the answer. And yes, it is. It is a mindset trick. Of course it is. Um, and it's all very well for me to say this because of my massive experience as an actor and all the other things in it it does build certain muscles. So for me, I am completely, completely in a mindset which has other people 
kind of there when I'm doing those recorded videos. Um, and that sounds completely nuts, doesn't it? But it, that, that is where you want to try and get to. And the way to do that is, again, to get out, sort of make sure you really know what your content is trying to achieve and that you're really connected to it, that you really get enthusiastic about it. Um, and it isn't just something you thought you should say, that you really get that this is going to resonate and that everything about it you've done in a way that's going to link and connect and then they're, they're, they're there. They've asked you these questions, and now you're really enthusiastic to answer them. And every every little thing like that you can do in your mindset takes you a step closer to forgetting that they're not there, if that makes any sense. Yeah, no, that's, I like that. That's good. It's, um, uh, yeah, so you're working more up here sort of thing and just, you know, trying to kind of, um, you know, do, do the work in your head, I suppose. The, I mean, yeah, I, I, oddly, I, I'm kind of changing my tack slightly on this because, you know, historically we've worked with pre-recorded video. Um, I, I quite like the live environment. And whilst I recognize that it's kind of scary to press a go live button, there's something about it that is a bit more audience based in the sense that you do have people there. You can ask people for questions and also you can't get hung up on every little kind of detail. So one of the one of the challenges with pre-recorded video, as anyone who's tried it will know, is that you you do a run through and then you kind of go, oh, I said if instead of but or I said, you know, I, I, you, you've messed up one word and you get so hung up on that being kind of perfect that you go back and do it again and go back and, and then suddenly you're getting knotted up and you're kind of getting stressed by the fact that you haven't got it word perfect. And there's something quite nice about live video that's not word perfect which allows you to just kind of get yourself used to a video environment a little bit more so that's maybe one thing to try for people um I, the other one last go on oh sorry no go on i was just going to say that that um again part of your being human works it works really well when you do slightly fluff something and and actually don't cut it out <laughs> so it's like something you're doing a video and that you know and the tripod slightly goes over that way i want something to come out and say whoops you know that's fine i i know it's really hard for people who are much more kind of perfectionist about these things and it's easy for me to say this and it's not so easy to do and I get that I really do but understand that no human has every word coming out of their mouth perfectly at every moment and it is way more connecting um, with with people when actually it's not quite so perfect but I do know what you mean because I do sometimes Facebook lives um, when I literally am just walking around the blog and blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> but then, but then, of course, there's too much. There's too much for if you're wanting to get a, a point across. Um, they, they're mm. more kind of philosophical, and yeah, you know, some people just love listening to me rabbiting away, and you know, whatever. Um, so it it is that sort of again, it's that balance between having the structure, really knowing what you're, where, where the flow of this message is, you know, so you're really at one with that. You, you get it. You get why you're saying this and what the point is. And what, but, but then, you know, once you've, it, uh, well, it's, it's kind of, you can, you can over rehearse something, but equally you do need to know what you're going to say and have some structure. So whether you, whether you put some bullet points up on a whiteboard behind you and you actually, I always say to people, don't be scared of consciously looking at notes or a whiteboard and making it perfectly clear that that's what you're doing. Some people sort of, they, they do this like, so they've got their notes here and they'll do this kind of, uh, do this, this kind of thing, because they think, oh, I mustn't let anybody see that I've got yeah, notes Yeah, it's here. almost better to just kind you of... Might, you might just say, oh, you know, and I've written this down. It's fine. I wanted to remind myself to say this, this, and this. That's, that's, that's human. That will connect. Mm. Hmm. Sorry, I get very passionate. Don't I? Sometimes no, no, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, you, I suppose coming back to the uh, Gordon said uh, he did send. Uh, totally agree. He doesn't like scripts, uh, whether he's doing videos or presentations or trainings. And yeah, I totally. I mean, I think scripts are probably the wrong way to go. The only time we recommend using scripts is if you're using an auto cue for a technical presentation. If you're doing something that requires, you know, uh, to be signed off by people and kind of technical aspects to it. Then, but yeah, for the most part, when we when I create a video, actually, if we do it with clients, a lot of the time we do interview um, because that's a lot more conversation. So when you're doing a video by yourself, um, you know, with your mobile phone or something like that, 
then you can borrow ideas from that. So you could either get somebody to ask you questions and then you kind of look into the lens and deliver those answers, or you could think about it in terms of an interview. So kind of to set yourself questions and then answer them. Um, that's a little bit more conversational than just trying to sit there and trying to kind of think of something to say. So, um, you know, if you've got somebody who can help you, um, that's a useful way of kind of giving it a try as well. So, um, great, okay, so uh, we probably, Give it a uh, wrap it up in a few minutes. If, if anyone else out there has got any questions, now's the time to ping them through. Uh, there's about a 30 second delay between us and the Facebook and the LinkedIn feed, certainly. So I have to wait for a minute now for people to kind of get that message and send their messages through. Is there anything that we have else that we haven't spoken about today, Trisha? Do you think is important in terms of um, accessing that part of you and kind of um, using it to, to, to grow your business and communicate with your audience? I was over talking. That's very, very rude of me. I do apologize. So as a podcast host, I should know not to do that. So two things. One is that I've actually got a free a free guide uh, um, on which really covers everything we've just been talking about. It's how to connect um, when you're when you're public speaking. Basically, it's four. it's the four steps, which I've kind of pretty much been through. Um, that's on my website, TrishaLewis.com. And it's it's it, there's no, I don't do spam and cheese and pushy stuff anybody who knows me knows that so it is just literally a useful little guide and it's on the real resources page so i can pop What's a link your to that. website again trisha I'll, I'll just add it onto the screen quickly it's h a for some unknown reason trisha lewis.com uh go to real resources and there's a, a you can just uh, pop your email and name in there and you will get a pdf of this really useful little guide which actually covers a lot of what we're talking about the only thing that I didn't mention specifically, but it was implied throughout was this, you know, how we're talking about accessing the real you. And it's how it's how you need to be very self build your self-awareness, do the self-reflection stuff, which, of course, we all know is really important. Don't get obsessed. <laughs> um, but you need to close the gap, basically, between the you, the, how you appear and how uh you really are and make sure there are there isn't a huge gulf between the two which sometimes ends up happening very easily on social media on all the stuff we're, we're out there and then we're everything we're looking at we're thinking oh not me um uh this is this is a, a sort of making sure you're not being driven by the outside world um but you you're being sort of driven by what's coming from inside and that then beautifully resonates outside so there, there is a difference um and I, I i mentioned this in the guide as well it's it's, it's the first step basically and right. then you go through all those other things that we talked okay, about okay and that's have I, have I got that right there up on the screen trisha lewis.com is that is that the that's the web address can you say thank that? you yeah okay. trisha lewis.com yeah perfect um, so Brilliant. Okay. And um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's, uh, so we've, we've covered loads of ground. I think I, I probably apologies to some people who are watching the, I don't think um, the the feed went out in the event that I set up at the beginning to start with. I, eventually I say I shared a link there, but some people might have missed the first uh, 10 minutes or so. Um, we will make this available again on our website. And like I said, you can follow the uh, hashtag. We'll, we'll add the hashtag to it as well um, so that you can watch back the rerun of it. Um, and let me just quickly check the comments. I don't think... Um you know, I think we're all good for questions. So, um, so, but it's been really interesting talking to you. I think there's probably a lot in here. I'm going to have to go back myself and kind of watch through it and kind of uh, take a few notes. But um, I think there's been a, there's a lot of crossover between what we do and what you do as well. It seems obviously, um, but it's been really interesting talking to you. Thank you for your time. And um, we can obviously find you at TrishaLewis.com and you've got that download there as well. Um, so, uh, and if anyone would like to um, uh, subscribe to our site, um, where are we? Go back here. Da -da 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 -da. There we go. Um, then at remotevideoteam.com forward slash subscribe, you can get notifications, updates, etc., for future episodes of the Content Club Live. Uh, for now, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I hope you have a good weekend. Uh, thank you once again, Tricia. And uh, we'll maybe see you next week.